So, good morning. Uh, we're going to be talking about neuromodulation, an option for chronic pain treatment, since this is a disease that is affecting most of the population today. Um, just an invitation for you guys. It's Chicago loss, Madrid loss, and Tokyo loss. So, you all welcome to Rio 2016. That's Dr. Dura's special invitation. Okay, here we are, Beth Israel Medical Center. And chronic pain. Chronic pain has been affecting 100 million people treated for pain in all the world. Uh, 3 million people suffer for chronic pain every day. Uh, so it really a large number of population suffering from this disease. And actually today we have around 50,000 people using neuromodulation as an option for treatment for this pain, chronic pain. So it's, it's really a very important concept to look at pain as a disease, not as a symptom. And as a physician, it will be very used to look at uh, pain as a symptom, that we treat it and go away once we treat the etiology or whatever cause is promoting the pain. Uh, as a pain specialist, we really are going to look at the pain as a disease. So our perspective of the symptom as a disease is completely different, and the way we target that also is very different and make a lot of um, other options of treatment as we look at differently to the pain as a disease. So what is neuromodulation? It's uh, the electrical chemical modulation of the central nervous system to reduce chronic pain. So and that includes uh, both of the systems that we're using today, the intraticle pump and the dorsal column stimulator, as well as the peripheral nerve stimulator. So the spinal cord stimulator is an implanted device that delivers electrical pulses to the nerve in the dorsal aspect of the spinal cord that can interfere with the transmission of pain signals to the brain and replace them with a more pleasant sensation. So what that really means? It means that we're going to try to modulate this pain signal that it comes from the periphery of the patient, the nervous system, at this, the central areas, such as the spinal cord, and we're going to modulate the signal to a point that the patient, instead of be feeling pain, is going to be feeling a more pleasant sensation. So we're going to try to stimulate the dorsal columns at the brain, and at the, at the, not at the brain, at the spinal cord, and when the impulses coming from the periphery, they're going to modulate it there, so the brain is going to perceive them as a pleasant sensation and see reducing the pain. So uh, we, we already told that more than 50,000 patients today has been receiving their modulation system. Uh, all started in 1962 when uh, was implanted the first carotid sinus nerve stimulator. Then 1967 it was the development of the first dorsal column stimulator, and from there, it started to be more and more widely used uh, until the new stimulators that we have today. So how it works? Well, as a lot of things related to the nervous system, we really do not have a clear picture how it really works. Uh, there is some theory, like the closing of the gate at the level of the, at the spinal cord by the antidromic activation, the large diameter uh, beta fibers. Uh, there is some pain inhibition to the supraspinal mechanisms involving reduction of the amino butyric acid levels in the periacidotal gray matter. Also, there's some modulation of the descending inhibitory pathways to release of the spinal uh, dynorphin in the thoracic spinal cord, and many others. The truth is we really do not know how it works. Uh, the most accepted theory is the gate theory um, at the spinal cord. So there is some theory that when we do activate the beta fibers, they are large myelinated fibers at the posterior column, that will be close the gate for the, the C fibers that are coming. And by inhibiting the C fibers, we're going to have more of the, pre, of the beta fibers activation, and that will give a pleasant sensation of the, people say, like tingling or different sensations like that. And some of the C fiber sensations are going to be inhibited, so the pain is going to be perceived in a much lower level at the central nervous system in the brain. 
So that's really accounts that usually we expect an average of 50, 70% improvement of the pain control. Very rarely we do have 100% because some of the C fibers is still bypass the gay theory and still reach the brain. So is that really how it works? It doesn't explain everything, so we're not sure. That's one of the most accepted theory today. And that's how we explain to the patients. Uh, but definitely, when you go into deep and study this, we really cannot understand this clear. So indications. Indications are very important because uh, if you do not have a very good indication, your chances of good response decrease tremendously. So here we have um, a situation when we, what we're going to sit the patients. So patients with clear radiculopathic symptoms, clear neurological symptoms, uh, central nervous system involvement, like neuralgias and radiculopathies, they really, the first indication in neurostimulation. Those patients respond poorly to medications and mu receptors blockers. Um, here we go. And the other side here, we have patients with more diffuse cancer pain when nociceptive pain is very uh, strong, uh, osteoporotic pain, axosomatic pain. So those patients respond very well to medications, intrachecal drug delivery. So the neuromodulation has to be done by medications. They do not respond as well to the neurostimulation. And here the patients, they had a mixture a really a mixed picture of their pain etiology. So those patients do respond well for both. Uh, and sometimes I have patients with having both of them. So Fellback syndrome is a very clear picture of that. When patients do have some neuropathic symptoms, they have radiculopathic symptoms involving the back, but they also have a lot of components of the posterior elements of the spine. So they do have facetogenic pain, scar tissues, hardware pain, so they do have all those other um, things that would not respond well to the neurostimulation, but if you have them with um, intertechal drug delivery system and a neurostimulation, sometimes they respond very well. And I have quite few patients like that. Uh, and they can respond to both. Depends which one is more intense. So complex regional pain syndrome. Yeah, I do have patients who respond very well to neurostimulation, and I do have patients who respond some well to intratricular drug delivery system, and I have patients who have both. So arachnoiditis also responds to both, and other painful neuropathies. So actually, evaluating the etiology of the pain of your patient and really weight the risks and benefits of both of the three, the two methods of neuromodulation can really uh, impact on the results that you're going to obtain. Um, so overall goals. What are we really looking for when you're going to do a dorsal simulation uh, trial to really try to get the benefit to that patient? Uh, we need to really have a good position electrodes in the area of a specific neuro target. So that's why sometimes the patient has pain all over the body. You know already that a stimulation is not a good indication for this patient because you have a specific neuro target area. Like uh, yesterday we did a case and the, the target area was the foot. So basically I didn't even went to T10. I stopped at T12 and I came down because I know my target area is between 12 and 1. So I didn't even have the, tar the, the, the work to go up higher and the patient did very well. We could target just the foot and the patient did it very well. Uh, so we also want that the electrical field uh, create paresthesia, they overlap the painful areas. So that's what we call coverage. So we, may, we must cover the areas that the patient has pain. So your patient comes and say, I have pain in my lower back, my leg, and my back, and my foot. Or you have to cover those areas. At least 80% of the area has to be covered in order for you to achieve any pain response. So if you have the pain in the leg and back and you only cover half of the leg, you're not going to actually get the coverage that you want and subsequently you're not going to get the pain response you're going to want. Uh, the stimulation has to be comfort for the patient. That's something very important. So the patient, oh, I have coverage in my leg and my back, but it's too strong. It hurts. So you're not going to really reach your goals. And you want to, at the end, improve the pain control 
but you're going to read this is my patient's doing better. I'm reducing medication. Or if I'm not reducing medication because the patient needs both, I'm restoring function and improving quality of life. So you get a look for that in order to decide that your patient is successful